their silence was bought. My grandfather told me, Samakim kunje angalim bichi. But what happens when a vice is concealed from a tender age, from its initial stage, and left to, to grow? It is ignored, neglected. What will happen? Dire consequences. Cover up of immorality will lead to more immorality. For the stu student council, they end up being demoted and shamed. <laughs> For the students, this student who keeps on reminiscing over the promises of the teacher, that student gets, has a poor performance because she's continually thinking of the teacher who promised heaven on earth. And for the other support staff, once discovered, may end up losing their jobs. Another question to you, our audience. Do you think cover-up extends beyond our school boundaries? Yes? Thank you for your honest opinion. Now, 51% and 27% both agree and strongly agree that cover-up does extend beyond our school boundaries. <laughs> and who do you think are the major, what do you think are the major vices being covered up in our nation today? Number one, assassinations and murders where innocent people are getting killed, their cases closed, forgotten, history. Justice is not delivered to these people. Embezzlement of funds, whereby? Where is the money of the public going to? Drug trafficking and smuggling. <laughs> illegal, illegal things are getting in and out of our country. No one raises a hand. No one is batting an eyelid. Land grabbing and, of course, the norm of the society. Bribery and corruption. If all these vices are being covered up, if... Assassinations are being covered up. It will lead to more assassinations. If bribery and corruption is being covered up, it will lead to more cover-ups. In general, cover-ups lead to more immorality. And who are these perpetrators of cover-up in our nation? Taking the highest percentage are the political leaders, that is 57%, followed by the government officials, the religious leaders, and the local mwananchi. I know you can remember this uh, information, whereas we are having the leaders of our school, the leaders, the people who have the power and authority misleading the students. The same case happens here, where we have our leaders at the forefront of cover-up of vices. Of course, they all have their own reasons. They are being that they want to protect their public image, that to gain favors from their subjects, to some of them, they are, they are the partakers of these crimes and others to retain their position in government offices. Now, fahali wawili wa kipigana, ninyasi itakayo umiam. It is you, it is I, it is we the citizens that end up suffering because there will be increased crime rates in our country, increased corruption rates, and of course, loss of trust in public and religious institutions. Well, one step and another leads to the completion of a journey. And there is a Kikuyu saying that goes, Gotire Moishi na And I'm sure most of you have been left in darkness, but this is what it simply means. There's no thief and an onlooker. Now from our findings, this is what we concluded, that covering up of vices is a chain that is being nurtured in our school and it later advances in the leadership of our society. Now to avoid these manifestations, this is what we require.
All right, Helen, thanks very much for that. Moving on, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions has said it will appeal a Kiambu magistrate's decision not to recuse herself from hearing a case in which city lawyer Asa Nyakundi is charged with manslaughter. Kiambu Senior Principal Magistrate Terezia Nyangena declined to excuse herself from hearing the case as the prosecution had requested. Now, Prosecution Counsel Catherine Mwaniki had on the 17th of May sought to have the magistrate excuse herself from the hearing of from hearing the case. Now she claimed that they had intelligence indicating prior contact to influence the court on the matter. Mwaniki said the DPP will move to the High Court now to appeal the verdict. Nyakundi is accused of shooting his son to death, an offence that he has denied. West Pakot leaders have accused the Inua Mama and Embrace Women legislators groups for using politics to polarize the country. West Pakot Governor John Loyangapur says that the activities of the two women groups are entrenching divisions and hate among leaders in the country. Kapenguria MP that Samuel Moroto has urged leaders to stop perpetuating incitement, I should say, to avoid triggering violence in the country. The Inua Mama Women Group is made up of women legislators allied to Deputy President William Ruto, while the Embrace Women Group is composed of women leaders allied to President Uhuru Kenyatta and opposition leader Raila Odinga. Wa mama wakishi anza kuonyesha dalili ya kuonyesha kwamba muna support you wing. Iyo sasa, iyo sasa, unajua mama ndi final fashion. Kupaleka sisi parapara hiyo, kama muna kata sasa sisi. So nyinyi wa mama, towe ni iso fashion yeni ya manguwa muna faa. Wacha, kudidi ni mwendele na kasi yeni ya kawaida. Tu wengine tumetoka, mbali kutunelewa mambi ya fita. Wakati hata ile kidogo ikitoka inasababisha hasara kubwa lakini sasa hii ya siasa je hatutaki isunguke mawaso ya watu The Kenya Wildlife Service Institute is set to undergo a transformation and be converted into an international science research center to be able to accommodate students from other African countries. Now this is in line with the Technical and Vocational Training Act according to Tourism Cabinet Secretary Najib Balala. The government will also change the curriculum to fit the rising market demands. Well, this emerged during a colourful graduation ceremony where graduates were awarded certificates after a three-year training. The Utali College will also have a base at the Institute in order to attract students from the North Rift and Western Kenya. We want the headquarters of research to move from Nairobi to be made here in Naivasha because the environment is conducive for their work. So, Madam Piers, you have a job already. You're very capable. I appreciate your competence. And definitely, in the next three months, we will have a clear strategy and a framework. The Kenya National Union of Teachers, Kiambu County Secretary, has called out Secretary General Wilson Sosion as the impediment towards the advancement of teachers in the country. He says that since 2014, no teacher has been promoted. He was speaking during an education day in Limuru. Sosion has not directed the union the right way. I am your NEC. The requisition that was written to have him out, it's me who drafted it. As teachers, it's our appeal to the government that, that uh, it looks to the promotion of teachers. Elsewhere, residents in Budalangi area in Mwiki are at risk of contracting waterborne diseases as a result of drinking water suspected to be contaminated with sewage. Residents say they have not had clean tap water for the past three weeks, resulting in cases of waterborne diseases. They say water bearing a stench is coming out of the taps, but they have still had to use it due to the lack of easily accessible alternatives. 
Auto vendors in the area have increased and have taken advantage of the situation by hiking water prices. Our residents now call on the Nairobi Water and Sewerage Company to quickly intervene before the situation deteriorates. Maji, sasa hii ni wiki ya tatu. Uh, tunakunywa maji ambayo yamejanganyikana na adiju kama ni sewage, adiju ni ni nini ambayo iko ndani ya maji yetu. Maji toka black na inanuka sewage. Tumejaribu tatizo hili kulitatua kupitia kwa watu wa maji hatujapata. Tumeenda kwa ofisi zote hata kwa MCA na wapi na wapi lakini hatujapata solution. Thousands of newborn babies are set to benefit from newly installed machines at the Mogosho Sub County Hospital in Baringo County. The hospital was constructed back in 2017 but was poorly equipped and could not offer the required services to pregnant women and mothers. But now the hospital will be able to offer quality health care throughout pregnancy as well as during and after delivery. It is one of the 135 public health facilities that will receive equipment procured through U.S. aid in partnership with the Baringo County Government, the Kenya Medical Supplies Agency and the Afia Uzazi Nakru Baringo Program. The five-year project is aimed at improving access to quality health services for pregnant women, mothers and newborns. Mambo ya kupata mtoto kule nyumbani, ikue mambo ya samani. Kwa sababu tumepotesa watoto wetu wengi. Wao wange ukua maybe hata governor miaka ijayo. We believe that uh, this, this facility will, will deliver the services at the quality that is required, both for mothers, children, uh, youth, and of course, uh, the, 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 uh, the fathers as well. Now, Kirinyaga County health workers have vowed not to resume work, despite an olive branch extended by County Governor Anne Waiguru to resume duty today. The governor's about 10 comes a day after Justice Nzioka Macau declared the medic strike illegal and gave Waiguru the go-ahead to replace them. Well, the Employment and Labor Relations judge noted that due process was not followed by the four unions in calling for the strike. All well, the health workers had until Friday noon to be at work to save their jobs. The medics have, however, defied the court order and vowed not to return to work until their grievances are addressed. The strike has lasted over a month. We shall persist with our strike until our grievances have been met. Our professions have been given the respect that they deserve. And that is the only time that this strike will come to an end. So you can threaten us, intimidate us, fire us for the hundredth time. To mekata rufa katika kesi ambayo ilikuwa ambele ya justice makau. Kwa sababu tunaamini ya kwamba atuta pata haki. Bele ya uyo janchi. The Kenya Chambers of Mines is calling for the amendment of the constitution so as to improve the working environment of small-scale miners. The board met more than 200 stakeholders and small-scale miners from Taita Taveta during its annual general meeting. The Chamber's chairman, that's Peter Mwangi, said artisan miners lack the financial ability to carry out prospecting and mining since the exercise is expensive. He's called on the government to engage the small-scale miners to facilitate easy access of equipment and form a mining regulatory framework. Retired Major Marsden Madoka, who's a member of the Chamber's board, challenged artisan miners to unite and form groups and sacos for their own gain. We have been able now to expand even the coverage of the membership. We had about eight category members. Now we have included other categories. We are about 15 or 16. And we think by doing that, we have covered every sector of mining and throughout the country. We will really be able to get the small miners together because uh, we have many small-scale miners who have really not been able to move ahead. And so with us working together as a team, I think it will be something very valuable to the small-scale miners. And the scarcity of employment opportunities has left many youth with no choice but to seek creative and innovative ways to earn a living. But even with that, they still need training in skills-based courses. 
Well, such is the business of an institution in Eldoret, from which many primary and secondary school leavers have been trained and are now earning their daily bread. NTV's Gabriel Kudaka reports. At a double impact foundation graduation ceremony, where 300 graduates excelled in various skills based courses after six months of training. Lack of employment in formal sector was the driving force for most of them to embrace skills-based courses. We all know where our country is today and we all know the challenges we have as young people. We don't want to continue living in a country where 10,000 graduate and only five get jobs. We must change that as young people. Yes, you can get a job in that beauty parlor, you'll get a job in that hotel, but my wish and prayer today to God and is that these parents, as they come here to witness your graduation, they are coming to witness future business owners, future hotel owners, and future where the Kenyans who are seated here today. But as some left the graduation venue planning on what to do, some like Betsy Chepto, a graduate of this institution, is already putting the skills to use. She chose to defy the odds and take on a job that many perceive belongs to men. The organization also helps and links its graduates to available market opportunities. All right, it's time to shift gears now. It's the sports news up next with Warote. Thank you, Smriti. Yes, it is time to play under the two sporting events that are making all uh, Kenyan uh, sporting fans very excited. One is Everton, the English Premier League side, is in the country. I'll be telling you all about that and why. One play is creating a lot of buzz, but also the Safari Rally is ongoing. Day two, our very own Sean Cadoville is, is in Naivasha and uh, Sean, uh, a lot of... Uh, cars aside of the race and uh, 48 got off the ramp, only 44 got to uh, the overnight stage and uh, we'll be getting to Sean in just a bit. So let me tell you about Everton and the uh, English Premier League side Everton have arrived in the country ahead of their first pre-season friendly match against Kenyan Premier League side Karabangi Sharks. The 22-man squad includes a uh, former Manchester United midfielder Morgan Schneiderlin and a uh, former Arsenal star Theo Walcott. Everton plays Sharks on Sunday at the 60,000 capacity Kasarani Stadium at 4 p.m. East African time. And uh, the fixture will mark uh, the Toffees' second visit to East Africa after they beat a uh, record uh, Kenyan champions Gorma here 2 1 in the inaugural uh, Sport Pesa Cup in uh, Dar es Salaam two years ago. Sharks got the chance to face Everton after winning the third edition of the Sport Pesa Cup. It's great. We loved coming out previously and uh, we're looking forward to the game. What are your expectations as a team ahead? It's, you know, it's the first week of pre-season for us, so we're out here to do a little bit of work and enjoy the game, and hopefully everyone can have a bit of fun. Everyone's a bit tired just off the flight, so we look forward to uh, getting to the hotel. Now, right here in, uh, on NTV's uh, newsroom, all the ladies, okay, actually a lot of the ladies are asking, can they go to Kasarani and uh, meet Theo Walcott, watch Top Sport at uh, around 3 p.m. to see who got the chance to have a conversation with uh, Theo Walcott. But now, uh, Sean Cadovillis is the man enjoying all the speed and thrills in the safari rally. And uh, Sean, 48 cars aside of uh, how many made it and uh, who's uh, leading so far? Again, uh, technical issues will get to Sean in just a bit, and uh, let's uh, go to South America, and uh, Argentina and Chile will meet to decide who will end up as a third-best team at the Copa America 2019. This evening, Argentina lost to Brazil, and uh, defending champions uh, Chile to Peru in the semifinals. Meanwhile, Brazil will face Peru in the final on Sunday. Brazil.
false starts. Let's see whether the car will finally start. Uh, Sean, can you hear me and uh, what's going on at the safari rally? Yes, a very good afternoon to you. We are at uh, Soisambu, which is, of course, uh, just near Nakuru, uh, behind Lake Elementaita, in fact. And it's uh, been a very exciting morning. It is extremely close at the top. Uh, Boldev Chaga uh, with a narrow lead over Madhya Barian with Ankurai in third place at the moment. Uh, Carl Flash Tunda in fourth place, although he did have a problem uh, when his car switched off while crossing a river. And in fifth place, we got Leroy Gomez uh, from Zambia. Now I've got with me, uh, by the way, we've got, uh, we're estimating, I think, about three to 4,000 people here in the middle of nowhere. But uh, let's go across here and uh, see if we can talk to somebody. Uh, all right, we've got Christoph uh, from M Sport. Of course, uh, M Sport, one of the world rally teams uh, who are competing in the World Rally Championship. You've had a chance uh, to go around uh, some of the route. Uh, how is it? It's very different than we spot in Europe. So it's very challenging, very interesting, and I'm sure it will be very, very nice competition next year for every team in, uh, in the competition. How rough is the route? Uh, that's what everybody's asking uh, from the perspective of the World Rally Championship. Well, I think only stage nine is quite rough, uh, but in the end, it's just a few sections. I think if we can get some work done, uh, and if R5 cars can do it, I'm sure WRC cars can do it as well. And this is Safari Rally, so we cannot expect very smooth roads, but it's very challenging and very interesting to see what we can achieve next year. All right, uh, up next we got, of course, Pablo from uh, Hyundai World Rally Team. Uh, how has it been so far from your perspective? I know you're very impressed with the spectator stage uh, here. Yeah, we arrived now just here and uh, we are quite impressed about the spectator area, how is fit, how is set, everything for enjoy for the public, for the VIPs and for everybody, 100% uh, security. Uh, the car moved uh, only so far. We'll get uh, Sean uh, back on here over uh, Top Sport and uh, just have a chat with him regarding uh, what's going on with the Safari Rally. But uh, that's the latest update. And uh, we keep playing. And Paul Pogba's agent, Mino Raiola, believes that the French midfielder's uh, transfer will finally be concluded before the Manchester United uh, team begin their pre-season tour, noting that he is ready to leave uh, the Premier League side in the summer uh, with a transfer quote in the process. Uh, Pogba, who moved uh, to United from Juventus, in 2016 for a then world record fee of 89.3 million pounds has paid you.
much. Now, a spate of killings in Matungu in Kakamega County struck the county early in the year and left close to 20 people, including the unborn, dead. An operation was put in place and it draws to an end. Nonetheless, pain and questions linger on. Some bereaved families speak to Brenda Wanga and Zakes Mwasame on this Sunday's special feature, Scars of Matungu, at 7 and 9 p.m. Here, though, is a sneak peek. Sharifa alinletea ndoto mwenyewe. Ambia baba, una habari, sina habari. Vila unaona watu wamesimama kwa taraja hapo. Nugu yangu Yusuf Shugundu ndi wameuliwa. Sasa hiyo kisu nafukiria ilitobua kichwa. Wamepiga makizu wa kirarua, wamemkata kwa kichwa. Waligia, kunishika, nukumaza kunichapa kofitatu ili mzito sana. Paka nikachake nyukiwa kini. Sasa nilishindwa kujua ni wakina nani waliwa Sharifa. Watu wenye waliwa mtoto wangu pia nataka wapate... Shida vile mtoto wangu alipata. All right, Scars of Matugu coming your way tomorrow at 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Thanks for watching NTV at 1. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi, but certainly not leaving you without Bullseye. And behind the success of any man is, of course, a woman. So the adage goes, and the opposite is perhaps also true in the case of one Ferdinand Waititu. It's all about wealth, and with a woman of faith spilling the beans, Baba Yao's pressure can only go up. Well, also going up in smoke this time is the reputation of the Molo MP, whose idea of one for the road on his way to a meeting called to discuss alcoholism is earning a new name, as Emmanuel Juma now reports on Bullseye. Meet Honorable Francis Kuria Kimani or FKK. He was in an FKK, fanya kanyuaji katambe mode here. What's up, FKK? Mimi zimechoka. So tired was Mweshimiwa that extraordinary measures had to be taken to get him to the venue where a meeting to discuss excessive drinking was taking place. Mambo ya pombe, ya kwa sababu ya eliyatu ya? Oh my! Amekuja amkiwa mulevi mulevi hata turijua turijua tu kama akifenza akipanda kwa fence amekuja kama amelewa zakare amelewa zakare the constituents had spoken that's when a man wakes up from whatever stupor it was and changes tact fkk now chooses water and he has also realized that perhaps a banana a day keeps the bottle away kuna makosa inaweza kufanyika if that's an apology, prove it. Prove that you are now saved. Wow, Mhesh. My commitment ni kwamba mahali kuna haribika, kuna rekebishwa. That is pressure. Iko pressure kubwa sana. Waititu. Otherwise. Otherwise to you too. Hata za hii pressure, apana weko na president uhuru. But that's nothing compared to what you're about to experience when the tall walking faith is done with you. All the tenders are awarded to the family members. Much of the public properties has been transferred to private individuals. This is it. Baba Yao meets Mama Yao. One mama will not be scared by the mere act of throwing stones. This county is a GOK. It's a government of Kenya county and that's why it is funded and doesn't have to be managed like a, a personal kiosk for the families and proxies. That is wrong and lack of manners. Yes, that is lack of manners. Yes. She will need a lot of faith, this faith and prayers. Kenya is safe in the hands of God. Nobody should worry about many things. There are many stories all over the place. Maneno hii, mashindano. 
Hivyo kama wakenya tukitaka kutubu sawa sawa tukienda kanisani Jumapili sema ukweli. Hapana aina tuko kanisa mwebeba pesa kwa gunia. <laughs> you are against any Arambe even for women because you say it is corrupt. But it is because you are the Lord of Poverty. Perhaps the reason why new dance groups are being formed, new dance styles are being invented, and new tunes composed. and the lord of poverty will have no space in our nation anza kwa kutubu dhambi zako alafu ndio tupeane tadaka yako kwa kanisa the lawyer should say these two must have shared imondo the gizzard who is this which type of hermeneutics they are trying to teach us that we cannot take over into the church shame on you may you perish and the job description of the dp again mimi nashangaa kwani kazi ya deputy president ni gani? That's what I'm also asking. Mimi sipiki chai kwa ofisi. Mimi si watchman. No more has last job for the son of Samoe. One na no more. Talk about seeing the light. Emmanuel Juma, Bullseye, NTV.